What's up Starcraft fans? Last time we did Nova level 1, this time we're gonna do Stukov level 1. So regarding his power spikes, level 2 allows you to infest enemy structures, that's good. Epidemic will allow you to gain more infestation power, also really good. Apocalypse, now this one, this was probably a big power spike. It's a huge tank and probably the best anchor of your early game. Level 4, pretty good stank. Or the stank, the Apocalypse rather. Level 5, pretty good. Engineering B upgrade cash will make your uh, bunkers better. And level 6, this is good, this is fine. Not really, don't really, I don't really use uh, mass barracks as Stukov anymore. Level 7, pretty good. Yeah, we'll upgrade your infantry. This could be really nice. Brood Queen, pretty good for memes. Also, if you. Uh, if you are good at microing your spellcasters, then rookies are pretty decent. Infested factory upgrade cash, pretty good. Will really max out the power of your uh, of your frightful flesh roller prestige. Alexander, another huge uh, power spike. Alexander, of course, uh, the battle cruiser that can mic control enemies. Although at level ten, it cannot yet mic control. It's just a big battle cruiser that can damage air and throw infested to the ground. Starport upgrade cash. Eh, so-so. Don't really use starport units. Prosthetics, incendiary prosthetics improves your apocalypse. It's fine, not that, not that bad, but uh, you of course need the apocalypse itself to unlock it. Brood Queen upgrade cash will uh, make your Brood Queens, but again, if you like spellcasters, then Brood, brood Queens are your guy. Engorged bunkers, this will unlock uh, your bunker spam strategy. Uh, prior to this point, you'll probably want to just mass Diamondbacks when you're in a party. Uh, yeah, when you're a party, you just want to mass Diamondbacks, but if you're soloing, you might try uh, something different. Uh, this one will allow your uh, Alexander to mic control the enemy. There we go, the, the mic control. So, as for power spikes, 4, big one, 15, another big one. Uh, Alexander, I guess, uh, pretty good, but you kind of need the level 15 upgrade to really make it into a powerful battle cruiser that can actually might control enemy enemy air units. Big power spikes, I think. Uh, yeah, the biggest one's probably 4, 10, 50, the, the top bars. Uh, marine marine upgrades, pretty good if you're massing, uh, if you're massing marines. Otherwise, if you're going mech, 9 is a pretty good upgrade, but you don't necessarily need level 9 to go factory units to Kav. You can still do pretty well. Anyway, we will be on Temple of the Past this time. Thank you to Legendary Center and Trent Tent who are supporting me on the Immobilization Wave tier. And Darth and Shadow Archon who are supporting me in the Pulse Cannon tier. And thank you to all my supporters on Patreon. So, um, let's get started. Alright, so uh, Brian, tell us about the map. Temple of the Past is the map where we have to protect a temple in the center of the map from waves of enemy units. If the temple survives until the end of the game, we win. Yeah. If the enemies Pretty destroy simple. the temple, we lose. So, uh, the way I like to look, to look at this map actually is not with the timer down here. So you see there's a timer in the bottom left. That's usually how people go about timings in StarCraft 2. But I do it a little bit differently on Temple of the Past. On Temple of the Past, sure, I go by this timer for a little bit until about, uh, let's say, 15 minutes. Once the 15 minute mark hits, I switch this timer over here upstairs to uh, uh, see how much more time we have until the map ends. But anyway, that's going to be for later. As you can see, I'm uh, exclusively going for uh, for minerals at this point, and I go for a fast command center, an early command center. Because I will need the minerals to ramp up a Stukov, so yeah, you want to get your economy going early on a Stukov. You will need gas later, but uh, for this build, you will need something for defense. And your best thing for defense at this point is probably the bunker. So what you want to do is rush up to a bunker at the start. So you can see I'm already uh, uh, getting the barracks done, and at, I'm, you can see I'm, I've kind of stopped at 19 supply. Because a bunker costs 4 supply. So you want to save a 4 supply for the bunker. So I'm just building up the tech tree, the uh, the barracks, and then one gas. Just one gas at this point. You will need more later, but not now. By the way, I've also lifted 
this infested colonies compound to to move it a little closer to the rocks and allow me to uh, uh, send the infested a little closer in. I've also sent down one SCV here because again the same lesson in Vorzun preparation uh, preparation pays off. So you can see as soon as the barracks completes, I've started the uh, uh, the bunker over here, and then you can see I'm at three minutes. I've moved. I've uh, rooted the uh, colonist compound over here and allowed the uh, eggs to rally to this rock. And by the way, during that time, I've also uh, started a few more SCVs as soon as the command center finished. So uh, the, the three minute mark is kind of a big deal if you're uh, if you're a Stukov and uh, and you're trying to solo. So at three minutes, your uh, command center should be done. If you're do the strategy at least, your command should, your command center should be uh, done. Your colonist compound should be spawning the infested. So what you want to do is, as soon as the command center completes, you'll want to you'll want to make five SCVs here to really kick kick off your mining. And then you lift off your command center, you infest the command center, and then you micro the doodlings to these rocks here. Now how you micro the doodlings is you control, hold down control, click one doodling that will select all the doodlings, and then right click the rocks. And you just keep doing that as fast as you can. It doesn't matter if you can do it like once per second. Click, click, left click, right click, control left click, right click, control left click, right click. That's that's how you wanna uh, spam that as uh, Stukov. So anyway, uh, I use that to break down the rocks. As you can see, this bunker is almost complete. I've sent down an extra SCV. I've sent an extra SCV for repair because. Uh, a single bunker is not quite strong enough to hold off a wave, so I brought an extra one to uh, help it survive for longer. You can see I am actually repairing it. And for the time being, the SCVs are not quite out healing all the marines. But at some point, once enough marines have died, they will be able to actually burst it down. Just try out. By the way, I've uh, you noticed I've uprooted my infested colonist compound earlier. I rooted it next to here so that the infested will have a faster rally. By the way, I've shift clicked. You can micro the infested. So for Stukov, you can actually micro your infested. Most people don't, and most most people don't need to. But if you're going to be soloing at level one on this map, you gotta pull out all the stops. What I did is control click all these uh, infested, and then right click them to this rock, and then hold shift, then right click them to this rock. That's called shift queuing. Basically, it means queuing commands. So that your forces will go to right, go, will go right next to the command, the second command after you do the first command, without you needing to tell them um, once they finish doing it. So what, the, what when practice, what this means is they will kill this rock first, and after killing that, they will automatically put this other rock and kill it. That's the power of uh, shift queuing. Although most of you guys already know that. Just want to make sure you know. I uh, make no assumptions when you're when you're making videos like this. Do not assume that your viewers know anything. It's probably a good habit to have either way. I've also started this uh, upgrade here to allow my uh, uh, infested to have a little more range, which will be helpful later on. A little bit. You can see I'm just rallying my dudes uh, to the side of the bunker because I will need them later on, but I don't need them to uh, draw aggro too early, otherwise uh, the bunker won't be able to shoot. So I wanted to all fight at the same time to give them the best chance of survival. By the way, another thing I've done is you notice this overlord is heading right here. So that's another thing, a uh, little subtle thing I did. Once this overlord hatched, I right clicked this overlord to this spot because I wanted to creep it up. Because, uh, yeah, on top of the pass at nine, nine, either 9 minutes or 10 minutes, there will be waves at both sides. If the enemy, if the enemy hybrid is air based hybrid, it will be a single wave at 9 minutes and double wave at 10 with hybrid. If the 6 minute wave has a ground hybrid, the 9 minute wave will come at both sides. So there you go. You can see now I've actually made the fight at the same time and even used the uh, infest structure to help fight off the enemies. Again, with double repair. So once that marine range completed, I switched on the factory to the tech lab. And I start a siege tank and siege tank upgrade. This is actually pretty important. So I started at five, around five minutes, thirty seconds. I moved the bunker a little bit forward so that it will be in range of the uh, void thrasher when it spawns. I start another gas there. 
pretty important. In case I'm just sending my overlords to, to the areas where I need creep. So manually spending creep as your or with your overlords is pretty important. If you remember, if you remember, and you were uh, keenly observing what I did, the first overlord, the, the very first overlord that spawned, I sent right here. You can see it's still here, and that overlord spread creep here just in time for me to be able to build the first bunker over here. So without this overlord, I wouldn't have the bunker in place. So that's another subtle thing I did. Six minute wave is actually on the way. I have now three SCVs here. Ready to repair, and I put the siege tank a little bit back. So that wouldn't be... Yeah, you can see it's a, it's actually a ground hybrid, so the 9 mid wave, therefore, will have prongs on both sides. Excellent. I have the second siege tank here. I'm actually shooting down the bio, so that all that's left will be the hybrid, which, we can, which can actually uh, be targeted down by my bunker and siege tanks. So my strategy is... I'm crystallizing already a little bit here. You can kind of see that my strategy is actually mass siege tanks. Stukov siege tanks are the best siege tanks in all of co-op, as we may have established in a previous video. And uh, I intend to uh, use them to uh, to the best of their abilities. You can see, they're just splashing all over these bunkers over here. Move the infested columns or the infested bunker a little closer. I siege these guys up and wait for the next wave. The 730 wave will be arriving soon. And you can see I've started double engineering bay, by the way. Because, uh, again, you might already know this from watching my previous videos, but if you haven't, the siege tank's attacks are actually shooting volatile infested at the enemy. So let's actually, yeah, you can see that the, these, uh, these volleys are actually units. And their upgrades are based on infantry upgrades. Which is why to improve my siege tanks, I will actually want engineering bay upgrades instead of armor upgrades. Remember that for Stukov, and if you're going siege tanks, you want engineering bay upgrades so that the volatile infested will do more work against the enemies. You can see I've already I've already actually finished a second factory. Just waiting to switch it up once I remember to. Bunker here is fighting the Void Vasher. As well as, of course, the siege tanks. So I've switched up the barracks and the factory. I've retreated the infested colonist compound to the center of the base so that it can kind of swing the infested to whichever way, to whichever direction I need them. I'm repairing this over here. I'm starting up a bunker a bit late, actually, but it's gonna be fine because I have two siege tanks here. I've also uh, relocated my first bunker to this spot over here, so that it'll be able to uh, provide infested to my siege tanks. Because the way two cob siege tanks work is that they consume an infested, uh, an infested infantry. So once one, so once one infested troop responds here, uh, it'll be snatched up, snatched up by the siege tank over here. In fact, you might have seen that already. It will be snatched up by the siege tank. It will be shot out as a volatile infested toward the enemy. You can see siege tanks already firing, already already doing their thing, doing great work against these fire butts. There's only one left, and that the medics are actually doing a great job repairing that. You can see it's just, uh, yeah, shooting these guys at the enemy. Oh, yeah, you can see you can see the siege tanks are, are, are actually grabbing. The uh, infested. You saw that. You saw that, right? The siege tank grabbed one of that infested civilian and it shot it out as a uh, vault infested toward the enemies. That's pretty odd. You can see it again. Yeah, pretty good. These siege tanks are pretty good. So now that I've actually deflected that first wave using the rocks as a shield, uh, I don't have a cause for staying here anymore. Actually, because the rocks are gone, so they will actually be able to talk to my siege tank. So instead, I go for a high ground advantage to be able to uh, shoot earlier than the enemies. See, I've uh, been rearranging my forces. And all this time, you can see I'm just spending my money. It's the same lesson as from Raynor. Just spend, just keep spending your money. Keep using every little bit of money you can to buy more siege tanks. I can say even start a turret down here because 
again, map knowledge. You will you will want detection against bio because it will send ghosts to some point. So uh, I guess the lesson for this uh, this video is uh, map knowledge. Map knowledge pays off because you can see I've pre-placed uh, a bunker and siege tanks here and here before the wave hit. I've also had a three a, a, a three minute bunker prepared for that wave, and also I moved the bunker here to the first factory spawn. So yeah, everything I've done so far is probably something that only players who know what to do can do. Like, if you put Harstum here, or Loco, or, you know, anyone else who uh, who plays a lot of 1v1, if you put Serral here, and uh, no one told him beforehand how the spawn timings on uh, Temple of the Past work, or he hasn't played it before, he will probably not do this. He can do it, because he's, the best he's one of the best players in the world, but will he do it? He doesn't know the timing, so he won't be able to put down stuff in advance. It's like it's kind of like a map hack of sorts, where you know what the enemy's gonna do. You have perfect information, and uh, if uh, in uh, co-op maps, you can actually achieve close to perfect information, um, uh, and you can leverage that heavily to prepare for maps like this, where you can see, you can tell, yeah, so. At 11 minutes, another wave will arrive, it will hit on both sides, because that's how this map works. The 10 minute wave will have hybrids, as you can see, and 11 minutes, so the 11 minute wave has already spawned. It's gonna head over here soon. Siege tanks trying to make their way here, but they will not do anything. Or rather, the, yeah, the siege tank here, and the hybrid here, because I have a lot of siege tanks already in place. So. We have 30 seconds until a 12 minute wave spawn. So we will need to first clean out the 11 minute wave that is only arriving now. And once that is cleaned out, I will need to come back here and defend against the 12 minute wave, which will be spawning in eh, 15 seconds. Siege tanks splashing these down, getting fed these infested civilians. Siege tanks try to inch closer, getting shot at by these. Siege tanks. Okay, so now you can see that I've uh, moved, started moving my forces. I put down this bunker over here because at 13 minutes and 40 seconds, at 13 minutes 40 seconds, 40 seconds, a hybrid, uh, a void thrasher will spawn here and will damage the temple unless we uh, aggro it with other units. So that's why I moved my bunker down here and siege tanks down here. And again, we will need to deflect 12 minute wave, so I will need to move these guys these siege tanks to this spot to be able to deflect the next attack wave at 12 minutes. It has already spawned actually, it's just wait, that's just, yeah, it's, it's just now making its way over here. There'll be a couple more waves also heading down the southeast lane. All I have to do is deflect them with siege tanks, you can see I'm feeding these guys. Just keep splashing them down with basically banelings. A flood of banelings. Try to chase down these things. Okay, there's a siege tank over here. We'll probably have to fight that soon. I'm trying to move these uh, siege tanks a little closer and to kind of clear out that section of the map so they, would they won't be able to rebuild. But again, um, again, infantry upgrades for the siege tanks. And keep making siege tanks. I know it sounds weird and unintuitive at all, but like, yeah, you do need infantry upgrades for siege tanks. I've used that. I've also unloaded. So. You saw that my bunker was on fire. The first measure I did was to invest it to kind of draw aggro to these broodlings instead of the bunker itself. And the second thing I did when it, when it was still getting hit, I unloaded the troopers at the bunker so that the enemies would aggro to the troopers instead of the bunker itself. You see, it's actually working pretty well. Now the doodlings are distracting all these things. And yeah, the uh, flasher has spawned, but it is currently busy with all my horses, so it's not actually attacking the temple, which is good. It's still a perfect 3000 health. I'll actually need to stay that way for a long while, because I will need that health at some point. Oh, there might, that might be the goal. Yeah, here it is. So that turret was actually uh, useful, because it, uh, it helped us see the ghost in the first place. So at 15 minutes, there will be a, a wave that will arrive in transports down to the uh, northeast 
northeast uh, lane, or northeast, uh, let's say, peninsula. Just moving these siege tanks here, allowing to get more value. But you can see I'm already moving my siege tanks up the spot so that they will be able to fight. The attack wave. I'm also moving the, the bunkers, as you can see. Yeah, just sieging these guys up here. Ooh, fighting the rocks. Okay. There's the uh, hybrid nemesis. Just gotta save one of the bunkers, but I have two more. Again, preparation pays off. The Vorazun lesson. Bunker will be able to beat this hybrid. Because it's, you know, a bunker. I've also moved down a bunker down here because the next Thrasher will spawn over here. On, the, on this, uh, yeah, this rock here. I will want to burst this area down before needing to uh, fight the hybrid, or yeah, fight the Thrasher. Drop pod has arrived. It will get cleaned out. This, uh, this area has been cleaned. I am now trying to establish another bunker here. Again, still making still making siege tanks. You can see two factories constantly producing siege tanks. Also, by the way, 3-3 is already on the way. Check on the production tab. Attack wave has gotten, you know, banelinged. And the bunk the siege tanks at this row uh, at this area, I just moved them to this spot so they can fight the Thrasher. 17 minutes. Oh close to 17 minutes. Close enough. Yeah, we're just fighting this thing. Keep sending the infested toward the basher. It will go down at some point. Eventually. Yeah. <laughs> so, so here's the uh, here's the only part that's actually randomized in this whole set. So once you've seen where the hybrid spawns, you can pretty much determine where most of the waves will spawn, except the 18 net wave. The 18 net wave can either spawn on both sides, on both lanes, or it will be twice as strong, but it'll come from one lane, the southeast. So yeah, the 18 minute wave can either be uh, northwest and southeast, or double wave on southwest. If the uh, if the enemy is uh, ground based hybrid, you can see it, it is this it is a spawn. So I am actually setting a whole bunch of these things here. I've also yeah I've also placed siege tanks up here you can see it's not actually quite enough we'll have to retreat these siege tanks try to keep them alive so I can see that uh, yeah my forces right right now are not actually enough to fight that wave but the ones here are so I'm actually able to yeah clean this out and once that has been cleaned out including the last of these ghosts I will yeah move these guys right away to this spot over here to reinforce there is still a uh, there is still a uh, uh, an air hybrid here so I use spawn a few of these uh, infested marines just out of uh, just kind of an emergency call and I've made a single dive back and I'm trying to research the uh, this upgrade that will allow it to pull them down there it is that goes making more siege tanks just spamming more siege tanks the next wave will come from here you can see I've already placed siege tanks here yeah, the 1930 wave will spawn over here. And then at 20 minutes, there will be a, a, a drop here. And they'll walk towards my base. But the 20 minute wave is also where they're, they're going to be strong. They're, they're going to start using drop pods at four spots in the main. So here, 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 and then uh, one, one in the random spot. Yeah, here it is. The 20 minute. Clean these out. And. The next one's gonna spawn here, but I already have siege tanks in place, so that's good. Alright, I also have siege tanks here, putting more bunkers down here. So yeah, it's just you know making more and more bunker and more rather more and more siege tanks. Stukov siege tanks are pretty good. They are pretty effective. See, this wave is actually no match for a line of siege tanks. If you guys play one v one TVT. You'll know how bad of an idea it is to walk marines into a siege line. Let alone a siege line with like 16 tanks. This is 16 tanks, guys. It's a bad idea to walk marines into a siege line of 5 tanks. 
But how about 16 tanks? The last wave here. It's actually in range of all my tanks, which is pretty funny. Well, funny for me, but tragic for Amon. Okay, so after that fourth wave on this uh, on this pattern, the next wave will be one from here, one from here, and then the double thrashers will spawn here and here. So I've chosen actually not to go for the thrashers this time because that's a good way to kind of lose control of all your forces and kind of lose the game. So instead, I've, do I've chosen to go for the conservative approach. I'll trade a little bit of health in the temple in exchange for putting guys on these ramps. If I were soloing this, yeah, I would sacrifice a little bit of temple health. But if you're with an ally, you could probably trust your ally to at least defend this side. And I would go on my side and clear out that, that thrasher. But yeah, um, since I'm soloing, not soloing with a level 1 commander, I'd rather not take any chances. So moving these guys around, moving turrets, start another turret over there. I'm nearly maxed out by the way, I don't think I've lost a lot of siege tanks at all this game. It's been mostly uh, using the siege tanks to kind of crowd control the enemy. Okay, move some more siege tanks there. Using some more diamondbacks, in case there are any air habits that'll come. Okay, I siege that. Uh, this overseer up here, so you can see the thrashers without anything shooting at them will actually start whacking the temple. But I've uh, I've built up enough of a game where I've not let the enemy damage the temple at all that I can probably survive this uh, barrage by the, uh, the the void thrashers. See more and more siege. I'm actually maxed out now with. Uh, yeah, with full sets of upgrades on my infantry. So with my excess gas, I'm just trying to mass turrets at this point. You can see it has 3 armor, it also has 3 attack. Beating some more of these guys, so the last, or th this is probably the most dangerous wave, the last hybrid wave at, uh, yeah, around 23 minutes. So once we deflect this wave, we're, we should actually be close to home free. Put out some more of these turrets here. There's only a single turret here, but I do have diamondbacks, which will be able to bring down these air hybrids, which will allow my siege tanks to kind of finish them off. Okay, that is one of the air hybrids. But I do have a turret here, and a bunker, now clean that out. Meanwhile over here, I have enough turrets to shoot at all those air hybrid. And that should be it. Creating more infested, more infested ammunition to my siege tanks. Cool. So we should actually be close to over. Yeah, there's only one mid left, and here comes the last wave. And that is actually not enough. That's gonna be bio based, so that will not actually, not actually be enough to break my front line of siege tanks. Because siege tanks are pretty good. Look at how many kills these guys have. Each. These guys 41 kills. What a boss. What an absolute legend. 40 kills on this one. Pretty good. Alright, so I'm moving these diamondbacks forward. I've moved these siege tanks a little closer in. To kind of do whatever damage I can, but it's no longer relevant because the game is over. There it is. Yeah, I try to yeah do a little bit of damage more to this hybrid or this void thrasher, but again, it's not relevant because temple has been held thanks in large part to siege tanks. So if you're level one, if you're level one, yeah, volatile infested, which of course comes from the siege tank. That's about seventy-seven percent, three quarters of my damage is just siege tanks. So if you're level one, it might get tempting to just mass barracks because it's simpler, but if you actually want to succeed, your best chance is to mass siege tanks. And you can use bunkers and the infested colonist compound to feed said siege tanks. Because siege tanks have splash, siege tanks have 18 range, and siege tanks can deep tunnel to any hotspot that you need to cover. And Temple of the Past, by the way, is uh, one of the relatively difficult maps to solo because you have two prongs at 9 minutes. And so you need to be uh, of a decent skill level fight it but 
If you have an ally, yeah, Top of the Past is kind of manageable, even on Brutal Difficulty. If you were to, uh, if you were to, uh, uh, play Stukov at low level and level him up, and you're not confident in Brutal at level 1, you can do hard difficulty or even normal difficulty. But I think at level 4, it's it will be time to sp uh, to move up a difficulty level, because that's when you get the Apocalypse, which is, again, a powerful top bar. The next time you move up could be... You could play Brutal at Azurus level 4 as a Stukov. That was the level 1 build. I massed siege tanks with a few... Uh, with a few bunkers to supply them with infantry, but uh, even even if you're uh, level one, you can probably succeed with mass diamondbacks if you, have an, if you have an ally, even at level one, because diamondbacks can shoot while moving and they can hit up and hit down. And yeah, once you have the apocalypse, you can pretty much go mass diamondbacks. I guess if you're playing on normal difficulty, you can up it. Up to, you can up it to hard at level four, and then you can up it to brutal at level twelve. I would say, yeah, up it to hard at level four, up it to brutal at level twelve, and there you go. Next week we'll have level one phoenix. That should be another interesting one. I will see you guys then.